In fact, speaking of controlling insulin, what I ought to have done is also bring in the case studies that uh, Dr. Jason Fung has reported, where they find they take profoundly insulin-resistant type 2 diabetics that are on insulin therapy. They're that insulin-resistant that they need more insulin to control their glucose, which is, have lots of patients which, like is that. which is terrible. But they find that within just a couple weeks, the intermittent fasting is so effective that they're able to get off all insulin. I find that as well with my di type 2 diabetics, insulin controlled. Yeah, within two weeks, 20 years on insulin, they're off. That's, see, that's crazy. And, the and power ben, of And, and Ben and Steve, we're also talking about behavior here where, where if somebody has the will and the ability to fast, it's just they have, they're so much more intuitive around their eating patterns when they're fasting. Yep, they, they right. can feel when they're hungry. They're not saying, hey, I got to eat, you know, at 8 and at 10 and at 12. And they're starting to be way more intuitive around their behavior yeah, around, yeah. around uh, food. I just don't want them to get discouraged. If you yeah, have same, just discovered this intermittent fasting tool, remember, it's a tool. And you have to apply it to your lifestyle and what works best for you. I think it's more important that you're intuitive about your nutrition and that you don't make yourself suffer because you're much more likely to, to not be consistent and not be successful if you are miserable with what you're doing. Uh, I enjoy the window of opportunity to eat and I feel so much better going to bed on an emptier stomach. But boy, let me tell you, there are times once in a while after if I've worked out real hard, I'm still hungry and I will still satisfy my hunger even though it's a little outside the window with my focus being insulin control. And that by far gives me the greater benefit. And for all my patients, I tell them that is your first focus is keeping your insulin low. The second one is being intuitive about your hunger. So don't get discouraged by this study. It's an interesting study, but it no way reflects how I teach my patients. Intermittent fasting is a tool, but it's not by any means the most effective way to achieve uh, health by avoiding the plagues of insulin resistance. And studies can be very confusing. You need several of them to understand what a real outcome is. This other study, the positive one, only had 19 participants, and they were very well controlled. And that's much more uh, similar to how I run yeah, my practice. Yeah. So I see that this positive result study is much more like I see day in and day out in my practice because it's very controlled. There's a specific purpose. The patients are well screened. They're motivated. And they are motivated. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what we're here to do is to help you see the motivation. And right. ultimately, Jack, it's N equals 1. I mean, yeah, how it affects said. you. N yeah. equals 1. Yeah, you, you're Meaning the study. You are the study. You, you are, are the study. study. Yeah. yeah, so N, in fact, to be scientific, N <laughs> refers to a sample size. So this study, you know, there <laughs> was an N of 19. Rich. There was <laughs> yeah. an N of 19 or an N of 116. N just refers to the sample size. So Rich's point is that anecdotes matter, that if you yourself are seeing a benefit, you are conducting your own study in N of you. You're your own sample size. Great. So I said something smart? It was brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Yes.